So this is my first do-it-yourself chiller. I'll start by naming the parts of it. This is the condenser. This is the evaporator. The reason why it's wet is because ice is frozen onto it. This is the filter dryer, which is attached to the condenser's outlet tube. This is the access valve, which allows me to remove a refrigerant from the unit or add it to it. So this is actually called the liquid lion access valve. This is a capillary tube. And this is the compressor. It's called a freezer refrigerator compressor because it's used for both freezing and regular refrigeration. This is the second gas line access valve. There's the same purpose, which is actually for convenience. Basically, this operates in such a way that there's always gaseous refrigerant in this evaporator coil, and there's liquid refrigerant in this coil condenser. This unit moves heat from the evaporator to the condenser. That's how all air conditioners and refrigerators work. And there is no other way to cool actually, or at least no other way to refrigerate. So basically, the compressor is continually sucking refrigerant gas out of this coil and uh, it's continually forcing that gas uh, into this coil. As it forces it into this coil, because of a process called compression, it becomes more and more dense and that causes it to reject its heat, causing it to get hot. That heat is then rejected into this container of water. That's why I keep it cool. Normally, I would circulate this water through a radiator, but I just wanted to keep it simple and intuitive for your sake. This is a plain tubing evaporator. It's called plain tubing because it's simply a copper tube. Evaporators are always basically just a tube with fins attached to them and uh, this is a plain tubing condenser for the same reason no fins are attached to it so both of them have to be submerged in water in order for them to be useful i should mention that refrigerators are actually extremely efficient heaters for every unit of electricity they consume they can produce provide a unit of heat this is, sorry, three units of heat. This is because uh, they're actually drawing some of the heat out of the air. The evaporator absorbs heat from the air. Some heat is produced by the compressor. And uh, even more heat is generated uh, as the refrigerant particles bounce into each other as they're being compressed inside the condenser. All of that heat adds up uh, to a tremendous amount. Uh, and this is actually why reverse cycle air conditioning is so efficient. This is a one quarter horsepower compressor operating using R134A refrigerant or refrigerant 134A. And the capillary tube restricts the flow of refrigerant. Uh, using the Due to the fact that it's so narrow, it's hard to get the refrigerant through it, and it, um, the liquid refrigerant enters it, uh, and it actually trickles into the evaporator, which is under low pressure. So it's used to maintain a pressure difference, because refrigerant is entering the, can enter the condenser faster than it enters the evaporator, the condenser ends up being higher pressure than the evaporator, and that also allows the evaporator's pressure to be 
very low. Both coils are made of copper, by the way. This one is too icy to tell. Anyway, in the next video, I'll provide you with more detail.